Welcome to another exciting episode of Melbourne 22. Tonight, we'll find out about an organisation that's fighting against hunger in the community. We'll discuss something quite incredible called augmented reality. Plus, we've got a terrific performance coming up from local band, The Joneses. All that and much, much more tonight on Melbourne 22. You're very unprofessional. <laughs> Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Anna Burgess. And I'm your other host, Aaron McCarthy, your host who's been here for a while and <laughs> not off gallivanting on holidays yeah, like this one. Sorry, I was just doing a play around the country. Yeah, got stung by a jellyfish yesterday. It's, you know, living the dream, the Australian dream. <laughs> it's good to be home though. Thank you for the weather, Melbourne. It's good to have you back. Now, Aaron. Yeah. I know you missed me, but mm. let's get straight back to the mm -hmm. news. Mm. I think that often we take the little things for granted. Running water, heat, a roof over our heads. But did you know that in Melbourne, many people don't have enough to eat? Really? I thought that was only a problem in developing countries these days. Well, you would think so, but the facts are quite shocking. Let's watch this report. It's usually assumed that hunger and malnutrition is the problem of developing countries. But it's shocking to know that a country like Australia is also facing these problems. And in Victoria alone, 200,000 people go hungry or suffer from malnutrition. In order to fight against this problem, there are different organisations working throughout Melbourne. Fair Share is one of them. Fair Share is a charity that's been running for 12 years. We work with businesses that have surplus food, surplus for so many different reasons. And we collect that food, we bring it into this kitchen that we've got here in Abbotsford, where our volunteers, about 100 a day, make 4,000 meals that we give out to hundreds of charities across Victoria for free. If you are living on the street, if you're um, having to beg or even busk for your meals to get small change, you can quite easily buy bread rolls, Macca's hamburgers, type, that type of food. So you can get protein quite easily, but it's the vegetables that are really difficult. So when we make and plan a meal, we plan for about 40% vegetable, 30% protein, and then 30% the binding, which will be either a pasta or the pastry or bread. To help Fair Share fight against hunger, many Melburnians donate their time and money Without them, the great work done by Fair Share would not be possible. I find volunteering very worthwhile. I feel that I come away from my shift feeling that I've really contributed to make something fantastic for somebody who's not as fortunate as I am. Job satisfaction wise, it's been probably one of the nicest jobs I've ever had. With so many Australians facing food shortages, it's hard to believe we throw away more than $5.2 billion worth of food each year. With so many people starving in our own backyard and so many resources being wasted, perhaps it's time we made a change. The easiest thing is to think twice when you're buying, just to know, you know what is the shelf life, the fridge life of what you're buying and how much is going to be going into the, into the bins, into the waste landfills at the end of the day. When we produce food, when we process food, so much electricity, water, diesel with logistics is consumed. And when we throw out food, and as a country, one third of Australian households now throw out more than $1,500 worth of food every year. When we do throw out that food, we're wasting all of those resources. And I see it as being almost a new frontier environmentally. We're worried about forests, water, climate change, but people don't think when they're throwing out food that they're wasting so many resources. And I think that's going to be something that will change. $1,500 of food wastage per household? Yeah. You'd never realise that the number would be that high, would you? That's crazy. Now, Fair Share are a not-for-profit organisation who are playing their role in the fight against hunger. Yes, and we are lucky enough to be joined by Elaine Montegriffo, the CEO of Second Bite. Elaine, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now, Elaine, why are so many people in Melbourne facing this problem of Well, I think food? that's a really good question. I mean, Australia is a wealthy, well-developed country. Um, we actually produce 
more than three times of the amount of food that we need that we could possibly eat and yet there's between one and two million people across the whole of Australia um, who are regularly having to access food relief programs because they've run out of food yeah. um, and if you look at the um, the figures of people who are defined as food insecure that's five percent of, of all Australians so that's about a million Australians who don't have regular safe access to the nutritious food that they need mm. for their health and well-being wow. and it simply shouldn't be happening in a country like ours. Oh, exactly now it's probably a pretty loaded question but how do we overcome this problem that, that's another good question yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i guess i mean some of the things that we're doing is looking at looking at the determinants of food insecurity so trying to understand well why is this issue here why what is the problem um, and there's three key determinants. So it's lack of resources, and that includes financial resources. That causes people to, to be food insecure. Um, it's geographical remote, remoteness from supply. And the other thing is lack of knowledge and awareness about nutrition and, mm. and healthy eating. Mm. Um, ironically, you know, a lot of the food relief programs, because um, fresh food is perishable, it's more difficult to move around. So a lot of the traditional food relief programs provide packaged or tinned food. Um, and that's one of the reasons why Second Bite has got such a strong focus on rescuing and redistributing fresh mm. fruit and vegetables. Now, how are Second Bite fighting against hunger? Yeah, well, one of the things we're doing, um, is, as I said, is, is rescuing fresh fruit and vegetables that would yep. otherwise go to waste. So we're wasting um, over $5 billion worth of food every year. So we rescue probably about 5 million kilograms of fresh fruit every year, and we redistribute that to over 1,100 community food programs across all of Australia. Um, where they turn it into healthy meals for, for people mm -hmm. in need. So that's one of the key things we're doing. And the other thing is really focusing on that other determinant of food insecurity, which is lack of knowledge um, and awareness about nutrition and, and healthy eating. So we've developed two uh, nutrition education programs for the community uh, and for, for individuals to help them actually understand the importance of nutrition, how to access and how to cook vegetables mm. and fruit. Mm. Um, and we see those two programs as really important and ways of actually leading people to what we like to call food independence. Yes. So they're no longer reliant on food relief programs. Yeah. Mm. Now, many hands make light work, so if you had one or two things that we could tell the viewers at home that they could be doing to help the situation, what would, what would that be? Well, I guess, I mean, we have to raise all of our funds for all of our work. We provide all the organisations um, with, with, the, with the food for free, as does Fair Share, so that's one thing. We rely on a huge number of volunteers. We have uh, over 600 volunteers. Um, and we always need more food because we have agencies coming to us for food, so it's sort of food funds and... Uh, yeah, and help really. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, there is a great opportunity for us to sort of to work together and to collaborate. This is a huge problem and it's not mm -hmm. as though any one organisation or one sector is going to be able to, to deal with it. So mm. I think collaboration is really important. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming in, Pleasure. Elaine. Thank you. Now, I wonder if you were to become the Prime Minister for a day... What Did you, you? I think I was going to ask you that question, Aaron. Oh, well, go ahead. Because I wouldn't mind booting our Prime Minister off. <laughs> um, if you were the Prime Minister for a day, what would you do? Oh, mm, uh, well, uh, I'd make it uh, compulsory for everyone to watch me on Melbourne 22 each week. Not of course, uh, control, after that, I no problems there. No, just Melbourne 22. Wouldn't really yeah. care after that because I just live off uh, my big fat pension. I'd eat pizza and uh, watch Entourage reruns. That's, that's what I'd do. Now, Self? let's hear from the public. <laughs> Maybe they've got a better answer. I would print my face on all the dollar bills. <laughs> I would spend much more money on education and culture because that's the way, the only way we can make a better world. Put, like, some sort of tax cut on everything so you can go have lunch and a coffee for nothing. <laughs> Legalise graffiti all over the world. <laughs> The first thing I would do is change all policies around live exports, factory farming. Oh, free parking everywhere. <laughs> yes. Everything be free. Free to have everything. To go to a museum, to do everything. Free transport. 
get all the chocolates and just distribute to all the kids? <laughs> um, probably get the issues that there is in Australia. Um, make everyone write to like a PO box or like a certain email address and um, yeah, their solutions and get everyone to vote on the best solution. I would make the Friday before grand final a public holiday. There isn't much you could do, but I would like to maybe uh, give more this kind of uh, constructive, loving, uh, positive uh, feeling to people. <laughs> Coming up next, explore the new trends in the world of digital gaming. <laughs>